So nice to have you all here. Um, I will talk about Net uh, today and Substrate. So that's how my journey began into the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, yeah, so my name is Cedric Dekost and I'm uh, the founder of Ayuna Network. And with me we have Dimitris, which is part of the Ayuna Network team. And we have been working on the Net toolchain, which we're going to present today for you all and to show what we can achieve with it. Um, why Net? Why did we took Net? I think it's very important for us because we wanted to integrate in Unity and make sure that we can build Unity games on top of Substrate. So we created a whole toolchain and an API to make that true. And with that, we also opened to the whole .NET stack, which is quite big, right? And um, we will show that afterwards. And uh, that's pretty basic, so it's for everyone. It's to make you curious about .NET and what's possible to do with it, right? And to show a little bit what's possible and uh, to give you an impression on what we have been creating, I will just show you a few things. And uh, we have been working on a prototype for the past half year to make it ready to play which is using layer 1 and layer 2 and on layer 2 it's using the trusted execution environments and so what you see here is our layer 1 and we're gonna now execute on the .NET stack a simulation of the game which is just gonna be, because it's a two-player game we need a simulator which is like playing the opponent, right? and on the other hand we're gonna execute the Unity game so we are also able to play it on whatever devices that Unity supports. So you can even play it on mobile device and that's quite awesome because you only create it once and then you compile it to whatever you want to play with. Android, iOS, console application and Switch and so on. And in the background it's just running uh, a simple API which just shows all the palette functionality that exists in Substrate and it's built by one click. So here you see already that it has 1.1 IUN on the blockchain itself and once I start here it will queue up on L1 and then go over to on the trusted execution environment for the game logic which is then working at 250 milliseconds, which is quite faster, right? So you have like four to three interaction per second, which is already possible to move over traditional game concepts which are round-based. And I think that's what is quite impressive here, because you can play and have already a really great user experience. So once I execute here the start, you will then see that it will start to to queue up and as the other player is already queued in it just matched them up for a game now it's the transition to the trusted execution environment and the trusted execution environment looks on the chain and sees oh there is a match that wants to get be played and then inside the game logic you see I'm gonna connect now to the trusted execution environment and gonna get the first board state then we're gonna play there and at the end we, we move back onto the layer one and just pull out, pull the final stat there. So my opponent already set the bombs, which is quite a pretty simple game to play here. And this part of the game, it's like in two parts. So the first part is like uh, concurrent, so everyone can just set the bombs. And then it changes into a, a turn-based game where you just like have to to uh, to get like your four stones in a row and the player plays just and as you see it's quite fast it's moving a lot faster than the chain itself does block times because trusted execution environment has like every 250 milliseconds a block right and the goal here is like pretty simple it's just about to create like four in a row and now Obviously, I have, I have the winning stone. I will set it, and once I've set it, 
you will see that the trusted execution layer 2 will send back the, fin the, the finalized state finished to the layer 1 and it will be like finished on both sides. So that is quite like moving from a slow transition, a state transition to a fast state transition to really get like a user experience if you would play in a traditional uh, game, like without any flaws in terms of waiting, but it's all on chain, right? So there is nothing um, uh, being um, outside or centralized. And this is, this, this um, game is using two SDKs, one SDK for our layer one and one SDK which is built with the same for our layer two. And it's using the same uh, substrate SDK stack. So that's one example. So I will just like... And the other thing is like that we are able to... to use like Unity to make any representation, uh, presentation visual layer for any substrate based chain. So this whole stack that I'm gonna pr that we're gonna present later is for every substrate based chain available out of the box and usable. And another thing that is quite awesome is like um, Microsoft just released Maui, which is able to cross compile to Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Tizen, and Windows with just one project. So you just create one project and then you can cross compile to any device that you want to have it in the end. And the good thing here is you can just like create your API once and then you can use it. And here as an example we are connecting to Kusama and there is nothing that you need to do except creating once with one click the whole uh, API extension. And what it does, and that you see here on this side, it just creates all the access layers that you need for any palette that exists on top of this substrate chain. As an example, you can see here the balance. So all the storage balances are already created. So you only need to access them uh, through these calls. You don't need to do anything special. And this can be created just with one click from the metadata, which is quite awesome because you don't do anything. All the types are already generated for C Sharp and can be reused for .NET applications and for Unity itself. So that's one thing. Then, yeah, let's go back to the, to the presentation. So the agenda, what we do today is like, I just, give a short introduction of how it started everything, then we will go to the toolchain, how it is being built, so what you need to do to create this toolchain, and then we will have some usage examples, and at the end, uh, Roman is also presenting uh, a use case which use Blazor, and we also do some part of the Unity app. So I started two and a half years ago by trying to to do an integration on Substrate, and it was quite hard to get uh, .NET working. And since then, we have been improving towards making this API much easier to and accessible for everyone. So it's really nothing to do from your side. And uh, we also extended it to make it very easy in terms of uh, REST API, which you get all out of the, bo uh, all out of the box. So that's one thing where we were yeah, working on really hard. So this was our first architecture which we have and this allowed just like accessing all the nodes. And uh, for anyone trying this out afterwards, you can just scan this code and access the GitHub repository. So. Yeah, let's go into the net toolchain. So what it offers is like a full-fledged substrate SDK and it has, it's just like available for any substrate-based chain and it creates net standard 2.0 and net standard, uh, net, net 6.0 compatibility. 
It consists of three repositories. One is the Net API, then we have the SDK and the Net Wallet. And here it's a little bit misleading because it has nothing to do with IUNA itself. It is substrate and there is no specific part in it which is just for IUNA. So it's available for any substrate chain. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that is really important is that it supports metadata version 14, which is, has been implemented, I think, last October, one year ago. And uh, so to access it, you have like multiple possibilities. You can straight pull from the blockchain node or uh, subscribe and uh, publish and subscribe or just send extrinsic straight, straight to the node. Or you can use the service layer as an intermediate um, way to access it where you can scale much more horizontally overall. But we will see that later as a live example. So what does the SDK offers you? It's once all the storage access, then a full REST service, including like the Swagger representation, then a WebSocket subscription layer, the extrinsic execution and all the valid signatures that you need. Then obviously it's very easy to lightweight scale and it's one click. So it's, I think, two line of codes to create the whole API. And in the end, it exposes all the types that exist and are in version 14 available. So I think now I will move over to, to your examples, Dimitris, like pooling, subscribing, and we go into it and offer it to look at it. Let's switch. Uh, ah, no, I'll switch. Uh, OK. Uh, okay, uh, Cedric gave you a brief overview of uh, all the quite fancy things that the, our SDK and our technology can do. But now we will uh, move many uh, steps uh, backwards to back to in order to see uh, some simple examples of ho how someone could actually access a node using the, our SDK and go through some simple examples of how we could possibly pull for storage changes or subscribe to them execute an extrinsic and also how we could use a .NET uh, wallet in order to create uh, an account, uh, unlock it and also connect to, to the node. So now it's time to get a bit more hands on. So I will have to, sorry for that switch. So let's, uh, let's say that uh, we are a, you're a .NET developer and you want to just access an, a substrate node. So we're going to see how we're going to generate the necessary SDK in order to be able to access it. So in order to start, of course, we need uh, a running node. We are using the, the, the substrate node like the, the monthly of uh, November. So I'll just, if I do git runs, so you see that. So it's the monthly and let's now start our node. So now that we have uh, our node ready, let me refresh that. We now want to start uh, generating. So as Cedric said, the basic component of uh, our tool chain is the Ayuna SDK. And the, the SDK has actually all the uh, information on how to do it right here and also a, a video that you can have a look at at your own time. But now we, we are actually going to follow the, the tutorial. So as we said, we need a, a, a running node. And then we actually do need two commands. The first one is to we need to install uh, the .NET template that generates uh, the SDK, like the generated projects. And then we only need to execute uh, these two commands. Like the first one is to create like a .NET project. And the second one is uh, the one that is doing all the magic and it has like four parameters actually that are of, of interest to us. The one is the, the first one is the version of the SDK. So if you try this at home, you can just use the latest one, which is the 0127. And then we just have uh, three more parameters that uh, the first one uh, is, uh, corresponds to the service layer, which is like we're going to use now the default one. 
the REST service. The other one is the Net API, which includes the, like the, the models of our, the, the node specific models that we need. And the other one is uh, the REST client that we will need in order to access the node. Uh, in order, and in order, of course, to, to choose which node we're going to um, generate our uh, SDK again, we have to choose, uh, of course, the URL of, of the node. So the only thing that we now have to do is we just have to copy this and paste it in here. Uh, the folder that I have created that you see here, it's empty. So it's just have, so I will just execute this. As you see to, to our right, uh, the projects are being executed. It just takes less than a minute, actually. So that, that was it. Now we are actually ready to uh, have our .NET application connect to a blockchain node, to a substrate node. So if we now have a look at uh, what we generated, we will see that we actually have like three projects. The other one are like test and mock-up. The first one is the REST service, which creates the service layer uh, in order that connects on top of the node. The other one is the REST client, which allow us, allows us to either connect directly to the node or through the service layer. And the Net API extended, which includes the um, node-specific uh, model storages, etc. In order to see, to have a quick look at um, how easy it is actually, we're going to start our service now. So, as you see here, we have a fully bloated swagger ready to be called uh, from either uh, for, from, from an application and you can, it, it exposes actually all the storages from uh, uh, our node. In order to just try it out, we can actually do it here directly from the browser and just go to system and get our block number, the current block number. So, so if we go here and we just call it, you can try it out, call it, and we get the result. It's of course uh, scale encoded, so the client will help us decode this, uh, uh, this scale encoded uh, uh, payload. But that's, that's, that's all it takes. It, ta it takes less than five minutes to get it up and running. And now what we're going to see is that we're going to go through some simple examples of how we can use our newly created SDK in order to connect to the node and get some, uh, for the time being, basic stuff just to ease you in uh, to, the, to, the, to how, how we use it. So, let me, so, yeah. So we have a, a repository which is called Ayuna SDK Demos uh, that includes all everything that we're going to discuss today. Um, if you visit the, this, um, this repository, you will have everything you need in order to try it out. So we will now, you will see here that we have the generated projects. The generated projects are actually the projects that we already generated which is the Net API, the REST client, and the REST service, but we just include it, yes, now in, in our solution. So it's the, the things that you already saw. And now we have, like, we're going to go through uh, direct node access, so directly from the client, and the one, uh, and access through the service layer uh, that we discussed uh, earlier, that we saw the, um, sorry, the, the Swagger uh, page. So let's start actually with a very basic example of how someone can connect to a node. So what we need here, what we see here actually, uh, is that we, we need a client. This substrate, uh, this substrate client 
is the, like the, the heart and soul of our SDK. This is a generic substrate client that allows us to connect to the node and some very basic functionality. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to instantiate the client, uh, check uh, if it is connected, and actually then just connect to the node and get some very basic uh, information, such as the runtime version and uh, the, sorry, the spec name and the implementation name. So let's just have a look. So if you see here, it's like we get the, that it's not connected at the beginning, it just gets connected and gets uh, the information that we need. So that's, that's the only thing that you need to do, and you're actually connected to the node. Let's, go, let's now go one step further and see how we can get the block number that we already saw, but uh, using some code now. And now we're going to use it, uh, do it using like the direct access. So, so how are we going to do it now? We're going to start actually polling for the changes of uh, the block number. If you see here, you will see that the substrate client is actually a bit different. It's like the, the extended substrate client that actually uh, builds on top of the uh, default one, but it's specific for our node. So instead of using like the substrate client, the simple one, we now use the substrate client extended, which uh, is actually part of the projects that we generated. So what we need to do now is we connect as we did it before, and then, uh, and then, we're here, sorry, I just, uh, this is a shortcut, so we connect here and in, we instantiate and connect, and here at this point we are already connected. And what we do uh, here, we do a while loop of, and asking uh, for the, uh, for the number. So once I get the number, I get like the primitive version of it, and then I just go to the, to the value of it, and I just have the, 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 the original block number. Then I just wait, and I just keep polling. So if I just execute this, sorry for the breakpoint. Uh, ah, sorry, yeah. So if you see here, it's polling every like three seconds, and then you see uh, the block number keeps updating as it is in our uh, explorer as well. The thing is, it's so simple that you can actually, you have your client, you go to system storage, and you ask for the number, and that's it. And you have your number, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So this is the, the first approach where we poll for the, the changes, but now let's say that we don't like polling, we just want to subscribe and let the node inform us about the possible block number changes. So this is the other project with a subscription. So what we do here, it's a bit different, but not that much. So we again get our client as we saw earlier, we instantiate and connect to the, to the node, and then what we do is we call uh, the, this uh, simple method, the subscribe storage key async, where we just add the params of uh, the storage that we need to, uh, to listen to the changes to. So this is, uh, this is the param that uh, corresponds to our block number, and then what we have to do is just pass a callback that is being called whenever there is a change. What does this callback do? It just unwraps, actually, the block number and uh, returns it to us. So let's just have a look at this one as well. So as you see again, we have exactly the same um, result but this time without uh, polling. So, just to, to recap, as we saw here, we just need 
uh, everything is directly connected to our client. And for here, we just need the subscri subscribe storage key async method, and we are done. Now, let's say uh, that we want now to, to have to access the, uh, the node through the service layer. Just to, uh, I'm going to go back quickly to the presentation to, to go through the diagram because it's, it's really simple for us because we work on it the whole day, but it might be a bit more difficult for someone to follow. So we're talking about this diagram, okay? So we saw now how we can pull and subscribe to change this uh, to the blockchain node directly using the client. Now we're going to see actually the same things, but this time we're going to be doing it through the service layer that we, we actually um, generated and started earlier. So let's see that. So I'm going to go now to the node access via, via service layer folder, and we're going to do like the polling thing. So here it's a bit different, but not that much, actually. For here we need like a subscription client and a, a basic HTTP client, and now we will actually need the system-specific controller client to be instantiated. And using this one, we will just call the generated get number uh, method, which calls our API and gets our number. It's that simple, actually. So let's see this in action as well. I know you believe me, but uh, I just want to be... So now we have exactly the same example, uh, result, sorry. So subscription cannot be uh, only done directly to the node, but to the service layer as well. So if we see now the subscription directly to the service layer, uh, we actually now have uh, the, uh, the, the subscription client that connects uh, to the node, and then what we do here is we again uh, provide a callback that handles uh, every change. This callback, again, we can see it, but what it does is just unwraps the, the message, the payload of the message that we receive. And now, once we give it the callback, uh, we just have to then subscribe to uh, the storage chain, which is the number. So, as you see, this is as simple as that. Uh, the method is self-explanatory. And we just call the subscri subscribe number, and then we, we can also, of course, check if it was successful, and then just uh, relax and uh, get uh, our uh, block number updates. So let's see that again as well. Sorry for that. Just a sec. So it's again the same uh, example, the same result, and this time also without polling. So, okay, this was quite easy. Uh, let's go one step further and see how we can actually submit an extrinsic. Uh, this will not be uh, that hard, actually. It's just one step further. The difference is, like, for, uh, for the extrinsic, that it cannot be submitted uh, through the service layer. All extrinsics have to be submitted directly to the node. So this is why this direct balance project is answered, uh, under the node direct access folder. So let's see. So what we are going to do here is actually we're going to move some balance from Alice to Bob. Let me also... Yeah. So what we do here, uh, we get our, like, Alice and Bob account, and then we first uh, check for their balance for both of them. And what we do now, we create a multi-address in order to uh, set Bob as the recipient. 
we add the amount that we want to transfer, we create like the extrinsic method that we want to submit in order to not uh, confuse you a bit, I'm going to skip the update thing and I'm just going to straight to the extrinsic sub submission. So what we do here, we again uh, only need our client and we have the submit and, and what's extrinsic async where we actually pass the extrinsic method that we created and an update method which is like the callback uh, to the to the change. So what we're going to see if we if we execute it, we're going to see the balance before and the balance after, and we're going to, verif we're going to verify that the the the, the subtrinsic uh, the extrinsic sorry went through from our uh, in our explorer. So let's see this in action. So you see here, like the, I think it didn't work so. Sorry. Ah, actually, something wrong with the balance, but as we see here, uh, the transaction went through with the, with the amount, and stop this and it was as simple as actually executing again one command so if we now want to uh, bring everything together and see how we can now use a dotnet wallet in order to create an account store it in our, on our uh, local storage on our device unlock it connect to the node, get some money from Alice and return some uh, some balance from Alice and then return some balance uh, to Alice again, then we combine everything together in this net wallet project where we will do exactly this. So this, uh, um, this is like the storage setup for our wallet and where it's like going to be stored. And what we do here is the following. We instantiate, we create a new wallet class, we instantiate it, and then we use a wallet name, which we're going to use later in order to load our wallet from the storage. We provide a password and a mnemonic seed. So the wallet has this create method that we can pass all the above as parameters and also the uh, the, the, the account type. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create the account and once I create the account together with the creation it, it's also being stored on my device and then once this is done we're going to again create a wallet and load the newly created wallet uh, that we just created above. I will get the wallet I will unlock it using the wallet password that I used to create it I will check that it is unlocked and then I will actually follow um, the same process that I did with the extrinsic uh, execution earlier. So I'm going to create my, my client, I'm going to get Alice, the, uh, Alice's account and the newly created wallet's account. I will check uh, Alice's balance. There is no, uh, there is, at this point, there is no uh, reason to check our balance because the account hasn't been created yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer uh, the balance initially from Alice to my account. And then once I've done this, I'm going to return some of the, I'm going to check the balance after the execution. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give back some uh, balance to Alice. So let's see this also in action. So we see.
So, sorry. So if we see here, we can see that Alice, that the, the balance was transferred initially from Alice to our newly created account, and now back from our account to Alice. It's just actually 20 lines of code. And uh, that was it. I know that it might be uh, a bit too much uh, to like get from uh, uh, in, in, in one go, but uh, something, uh, there, there is also a repository that we have created uh, for today's uh, presentation, which um, can be found here, and we actually didn't mention it. So if you want to use like this QR code, this QR code takes you uh, to a repo that we created just for this session, uh, that actually has everything that you need uh, in order to get started. It has like uh, both like the agenda, the main repos, our demo repos, how you can get started. Um, so feel free to just uh, visit it and uh, have a look at it uh, in your own time. And now that we are finished with the like basic and a bit more boring stuff, uh, I will uh, kindly ask Roman to join us. Because Roman is uh, like uh, part of our community, uh, because this, he's the living proof that it does, it's not rocket science, that, and if you come across it and you find it interesting, you can actually build your own things uh, on top of uh, the SDK. Thank you, Dimitris. So, um, hello everyone, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Romain and I'm a C Sharp uh, .NET developer in uh, Web2 industry. And I also uh, Polkadot enthusiast. So um, I do some substrate development on my free time. And um, so uh, basically I wanted to create, uh, to, uh, to dig into substrate and to create a custom palette and also the front application uh, in order to uh, communicate with my palette. So um, I created one, uh, a custom palette called uh, Monepot. Um, it was just for training, but the goal was to, um, um, you can create a Monepot for someone, you can contribute to this Monepot, and at the end, balance are transferred to uh, the receiver. So, um, as I said, I'm mostly a C-sharp developer, so when I w wanted to create my front-end application, I thought about uh, using the Ayuna SDK in order to generate a project I need to uh, communicate with Substrate. And I used uh, Blazor as a front application. Blazor allows you to uh, create a website only with C Sharp and .NET. You don't need to write any JavaScript at all. So, for example, if you click on a button, it's a C Sharp event. But Blazor will compile to WebAssembly and it will create a JavaScript file on the top of that. At the end, you have a big JavaScript file, but you don't have to write it on your own. So, how does it work? Uh, so, I, Dimitris and Cedric already explained, you have to run your substrate node. It generates a metadata file, and this metadata file is read by the Ayuna SDK. It's going to generate some uh, C-sharp project, and this C-sharp project are dependencies of my Blazor application. So now, let's start for a demonstration. So, so um, I got my account here, and the goal is to create Monepot from someone. So, for example, I'm connected with Alice here. I can switch account, for example, I'm connected as Bob. I will 
create a monopod for Dave. So I copy past Dave address and I'm going to fix a limit, for example, 10,000. And my monopod is now created. So when I will reach 10,000, the amount, the balance will be dispatched to uh, the receiver. So for example, now Bob can contribute to the monopod, for example, 2,000. You have to wait maximum six seconds for a new block. And now uh, Bob contribution um, is okay. So I can now switch account, for example, Alice. And for this new monopod, I'm going to change the end of the monopod and I'm going to create the end time I want the monopod to be dispatched. So for example, okay, in two minutes, so you can select directly on uh, uh, who is uh, selected that here. So okay, now it automatically calculates the block. The contribution will be dispatched. So we are now at block 42, and when we will reach block um, 51, the contribution will be sent to the receiver. So for example, I will also do a contribution of 4,000. Uh, I can also, uh, also contribute to uh, the first one. Okay. Of course, maybe uh, for Bob, if I want to add more fund to the first money pot, I can do that by adding, adding more fund. Okay, and now in one block, okay, now, the Alice contribution has been transferred to Ferdi. So Ferdi will now have 4,000 uh, coin. And in order to finish, we can uh, close the first money pot by reaching the uh, target amount. For example, I'm going to add 4,000. And now, both of my money pot has been closed. So, I, I build this project as a proof of concept. So, you can also, you can of course use a, the a UNA SDK uh, for video games and uh, video games development. Then you can also build websites with Blazor uh, in order to develop everything in C Sharp. So um, let's have maybe a look uh, through the code. So it will be really simple. But for example, when you build a Blazor component, you, uh, the first uh, uh, things you have your HTML file and at the bottom, you have your C sharp code. So, for example, when I, how do I, do I update uh, my front application? I have a subscription to the blockchain. So, for example, I got the subscription with Monepot count change. So, every time I got a new Monepot, I'm building my front app object, my DTO, and I do a callback to my, front, to my uh, main component. So every time I got a new money pot, my subscription here is called, and I, uh, I'm allowed to update uh, my, uh, my component, and then I call state as change in order to call Blazor he has to refresh the page. So 
So yeah, that's all for me. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, so I don't need that. Yeah, so I think the most important part here is that with this SDK, you can just integrate whatever you want into C Sharp and onboard every C Sharp um, developer to start on producing with Substrate anything, right? So we at Ayuna, we use it for games and um, yeah, so I can also show fast like how it looks if we would like to create like a Unity wallet, which would be, okay, then oh. So as an example here, you see like, again, obviously we always need a, a chain that runs, so we're gonna execute one. And um, here on the left side, you see Unity, and we created just a very simple example of a wallet. And uh, on the right side, obviously, you see the chain, and you see uh, the explorer. And I'm gonna run now the Unity part, which is then using again the net API, uh, the net wallet for signature and stuff. So I'm gonna do a proper login. And uh, let me create a new one, just for to see that it is working. So we will call it dev wallet. And the password will be pretty simple. And we're going to create it. So what it does in the background, it creates an enco encrypted wallet like we know it from Bitcoin. Uh, or like we know it when we export the JSON from Polkadot.js. And what we can do then afterwards, we can just use that wallet name and access the address by unlocking it. What it does then, it connects to the blockchain, which we have seen on the Explorer. And as you see here on top, you see now that we have like 23 and the best and the finalized one. So it's like subscribing to the node. And what we can do here, obviously, we can give us some money by just clicking extrinsic and it just executes like balance transfers and moves them over. So it's just like everything that you want to build is just accessible in Unity. So it offers you all the, the possibilities that you can build with using Substrate just as a backend. And that's how we use it for our games. And yeah, so that's it around Unity. And the usage is just like .NET, very simple. Um, I think that's fine for now. And um, let me see if we have something else left on the slides. So we will upload also a small challenge later on. And Obviously, it's open source, so everything that you have seen has been built open source and is reusable by everyone, so we are super happy if somebody starts to contribute or like Roman create like any applications on top or get in contact with us to just have like ideas to work on with Substrate. And we will also upload into the GitHub later on a, a challenge slide where you can solve a puzzle, and if you solve it, you will get access to some balances on a address on Kusama. And I, we currently have a demo table outside for the AAAs, which is one of our main products, which we're gonna go out soon. So you're happy invited to join us there and look at the AAAs. And yeah, that's it. Then thank you a lot for being here. And uh, yeah, if there are any, any questions, then happy to answer them. Any questions? Cool, thank you. Hello. Oh, okay. What did you what? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did you also um, implement the scale codec yourself in C Sharp or? Yeah, so I think the scale codec, we, yeah, we used one that was already built and we adapted it, the scale encoding, right? right. Um, when we started to work on the Net API, there was an existing project, 
And we used that project to just like get some parts of it which were working for us. And we just worked on it and improved it and so on. And the scale codec was part of that part that we used. But it, you do it once and then it works, right? Yeah, Frank. Any other questions? Cool. Then thank you a lot for being here.